Hello, welcome back to Real Opinions. Today, in celebration of the great Imperator Furiosa of Mad Max Fury Road, we are counting down our top three each favourite female characters. Yeah. In film, I have to point that um, out. Because in Jack film. and Chris hate women, they're not Jack. Here. Also, we're, <laughs> we're ignoring some of the more obvious ones. So yeah. There's no Ripley or any of them. Just not, not because they're not great, but because we what's, feel like what's the point? Death. What's the point if yeah. we just then were the same as every other list? Because Harrison's in love with Chloe Moretz and I'm in love with Ellen Page and there's slight obsessions going on, we've limited it to one character of that, of their repertoire each. So it's not just Chloe Moretz this, Chloe Moretz that, Ellen Page this, Ellen Page that. James, number one. Yeah, right. James, three. Right, number three. Let's start with yeah, your number three. three. I'm going to start with my number three, which is Nikita, or La Femme Nikita. Ooh, Luc Besson. Yeah, Luc Besson's Nikita. Um, she's she's just awesome. Thing, she's just awesome. Um, she's she's. I'd say she's one of the few action movie female protagonists that kind of just gets the film to herself. Mm. She yeah. she she has like the free free roam of it. She's Especially not at the beginning. Yeah. When because that came out what ninety one something like that. Yes. Like very early nineties. So there was very little of that going on at the time. So. Yeah. Exactly. And just I, I, you know, there's bits of it where it's like, oh, you know, makes a point of the fact that she's a lady and that she's able to sort of woo these men. <laughs> but but <laughs> but it doesn't. Yeah. But it doesn't overdo that. I don't think. Mm -hmm. I don't think it becomes, you know, objectively like in your face. Feminism. And just sort of like accepts the fact that she's a woman. Yeah. Like deal with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And she's you know. She's not made out to be all brutish and... But she's mean, still, like she maintains she the her femininity done. Yeah. Whilst, but yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, my number three is... First of all, I want to throw in a disclaimer. If we were including TV shows, and I was still very tempted to include this anyway because she is in a film, it's just the film itself is not very good. Uh, all of these places would be taken up by Buffy Summers. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> but no, like, or it should at least definitely be number one. Buffy is like next level in terms of female characters. But obviously I'm kind of... Because the best version of her is a Sarah Michelle Gellar TV version, I'm not going to include it. But I think this third one might unsettle you a little bit. I'm unsettle sure. me? <laughs> um, my third one is Ramona Flowers from Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Mm. This doesn't annoy me. It, pulling that I don't face like it. Just like, I, don't I, I, I don't like it. But I know it's got that whole kind of manic pixie dream girl thing going on, but I like that. And not just that, I like how dominant she is in her relationship with Scott Pilgrim. The basic setup of the film is Scott chasing after this girl and in order to engage in a relationship with her he has to defeat not kill defeat her seven evil exes um and ramona flowers is she's kind of an amalgamation of the kind of modern hipster girl of the 2010s mm. and the 2000s i guess because she's part of the graphic novels as well but she's it's it feels very much like in a lot of those kind of classical male female relationships you have the very much almost I know it's kind of like cliche to say it, but that kind of patriarchal, the man is dominant thing. Whereas here it feels pretty much in reverse. I know Scott Pilgrim's mm. got to do all the fighting and stuff, but when you see them together, she's the one that takes the lead. She's the yeah. one that kind of steers the conversations. That st and he's very much chasing after her all the time. He's the one that's trailing behind her. And she's really fucking cool. But anyway, Harrison, you're number three. Okay, all right, well, my number three, I very nearly chickened out and just went, no, I'm not going to do that because they'll shout at me. And I very, okay. very nearly went instead for Emma Stone from Birdman. But I decided to stick with my guns, no matter what kind of reception I get, and I'm going with... <laughs> the faces are already... <laughs> I'm going with Rosalind from American Hustle. Which one was she? That's Jennifer Lawrence. She was the best thing about American Hustle. I don't like the film at all, but she was the best thing about it. She was also a bit whiny. Very whiny. She's whiny, but it's like that. It's intentional. It's not like Mary Jane, where it's, she's whiny. It's, it's like she's don't supposed bring up to Mary be, Jane. She's supposed don't to be annoying. Open that door. She's supposed to be hysterical, and I just think it's nice that she's able to be a flawed character. As a woman, character is able to be quite flawed and still likable. I think she's only like fourteen minutes worth, but really? for me, like she properly stands out and steals the whole thing. What? No. <laughs> I think she's a very different character because she's made to not in any way be kind of something you're supposed to aspire to. Mm. She's hysterical, mm. as in not hysterical as in ha 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 hysterical, mm. hysterical as in she's not right in the head and she's a little emotionally unstable. My number two is M, as played by Judy Dench, in sort of Golden Eye onwards to Skyfall. Spoilers there, but yeah. 
Um, she's just fantastic. <laughs> What's the spoiler there? You didn't say that she died. Now I've said it. <laughs> you did. You <laughs> just said that she was in all of the It's films. been out for a few yeah, years. If you, you haven't fucking seen, seen Skyfall, Skyfall, then you don't out. deserve like the oxygen on this planet. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, well, she's just fantastic, really. I mean, mm. M before that had become a bit, ugh, a bit of a sort of secondary character. Was he even in the Roger Moore ones? I think so. Yeah, very but briefly. very, very, as a very minor character, mm. um, sort of Q became the dominant force. And I think actually, as Q has sort of taken a back seat in recent films, M has kind of come to the fore. And she's actually become one of the the most central characters. And, I mean, Judy Dench is just 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 brilliant. I think what, why it works so well is she's in this role, which is like a very masculine role, you know, historically mm. speaking, especially in the Bond films. I mean, the Bond films are just like, let's be honest, ridiculously misogynistic <laughs> and then M is just there to just give him a good old telling off and yeah. it's just it works so well it slaps him around the face it's a great it. dynamic because uh, Bond just completely answers to M and especially in the the Daniel Craig films and Skyfall in particular right my number two I'm going to throw in another disclaimer I was thinking about going for Alison from The Breakfast Club in this position just because I think she's my favourite member of The Breakfast Club but then the ending completely screws that up entirely so I couldn't in good faith put her in here. So number two, instead, I'm going with... This is, I think, going to end up as one of those generic ones like Sarah Connor and like Ripley that keeps getting told time and time again. But because the film only came out last year, I'm going to throw this in there now. And in a few years, this will be dated, but it doesn't matter. Uh, Emily Blunt as Rita Votaski in Edge of Tomorrow. Um, she is proof that the action genre is going in slightly different directions. Edge of Tomorrow seemed like one of the most, before I saw it anyway, based on trailers, based on the title change, it seemed like the most generic action looking mm. movie sci-fi type thing ever. It basically just stole the plot of Groundhog Day and threw it into a very generic looking post-apocalyptic sci-fi film starring who else but Tom Cruise. But then when you actually see the film, you find that Tom Cruise is very much the submissive force throughout the majority of it. And it is Emily Blunt's Rita Vortaski that kind of takes the hero role mm. for the large majority of the film's running time. And she is beyond badass. She does things that I haven't even seen male action heroes do. Sounds like a sequel. And, beyond <laughs> <laughs> and she's, she's funny, she's charming and badass. And what else can you look for in a female action hero? She's basically... An amalgamation of all the best things about female action heroes. A modern day Sarah Connor, really. Anyway, Harrison, you're number two. Well, my number two, continuing on, on my very progressive list that make women look great, I've got Amy Dunn. Spoilers for Gone Girl. <laughs> um, I, I'll justify this. I don't actually... Like, you remember when we left Gone Girl how angry I was at Amy Dunn. I really... That just shows ooh. how powerful the character is. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly yeah, yeah. my point. Yeah. I mean, I hated her. But, but David Fincher has said time and time again that the film was sort of meant to sort of expose kind of gender divides because some people will end up going like, yeah, she's uh, there are people on Twitter going like, she's her idol. And you go like, oh, dear. But <laughs> at the same time, there are people like me who just wanted to kill the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Female people, empowerment. People check. Well, it is, though, because you've got yeah. like a good female, in my opinion, villain. Yeah, that's, definitely. That's, it's just like... It's not just empowering to have them always be super tough action heroes. It's empowering to let them be shitty too. Exactly. Because they, they have to be allowed to be shitty like it us. It brings it to a quality. As well as being just, for me, absolutely hateful. She's also very cunning, very smart, and it's like such a... like a. I know it's not a breakout performance for Rosamund Pike because she's existed before and she's been known, but this is the first time like I've ever gone like... Duh! Like, so Rosamund good. Pike is really good. James, uh, number one. My number one is Amelie. Amelie Poulain? Something? Please from from Amelie. <laughs> Jean-Pierre like Junet's Amelie. Because she's just... She's just amazing. Um, this is a film about a woman trying very hard to court a man who is just, like, you know, like, very elusive. And I think normally these kind of films are all about a man trying to find some, like, elusive woman and delving into the male problems of love. And it just goes into, I don't know, it's just a love story with a difference. 
it's it's just so different from any other romantic film before it, and even you, since. Would you argue that's down to narrative or visual style, though? Because for me, it's always no, been visual. No, 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 not at all. There's because there's like there's a focus on like sensual things, like how she you know she likes feeling all the the grain and things like that, and that plays into the visual styling. Mm, true. But definitely like that the whole narrative stuff, and it's there's at times it's like slightly cartoonish, and I just I just it's just a great film, and it just she's just a great female character. It does. It's it's just about her as an individual. She's like a single woman, just enjoying life. I'm sorry, I know you're actually making good points, but every time he says "woman," he says it in that "woman," <laughs> "woman" <laughs> kind of voice. <laughs> woman. <laughs> Audrey Tattoo. Audrey Tattoo is just. She's one of my favorite actresses. She's just fantastic yeah. in this film and just in general. And have you seen a very long engagement? Yes, she's really great. She's awesome. Well. She's. She's one of the best female actresses around, and I think this film has 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 actually inspired a lot of a lot of the romantic films going onwards. Like you look at things mm. like a lot of these kind of twee indie comedies. I think a lot of them owe to the success of oh, yeah, the kookiness of the it. kookiness. I mean, you know, it was like a low budget film that grossed extortionate amounts of money worldwide, and it's just it's just excellent. Mm. I love it, and I love Amelie, and I, I want Amelie. Ah! Right, um, my number one, and Harrison is, I know you've got some sort of thing ready in your back pocket to oh. fire at me. I don't disagree with the choice, but this one bit I want. I know, and part of this comes from a slight fanboy perspective. Slight? But because it is the character from my favourite film played by my favourite female performer. But I have my reasons. Uh, from the movie Super, James Gunn Super, is... Ellen Page as Balti slash Libby. Uh, and Libby is probably one of the boldest female characters I've seen in a film. I think Balti is definitely a look uh, a total confidence by a filmmaker. James Gunn has done something which a lot of people are too scared to do, which is show a very hysterical, very mentally disturbed individual and play them almost for laughs. And I know a lot of people will kind of take this on face value and be like, oh yeah, she's really funny. That's not why I'm saying she's here. Uh, she's funny and she's badass and she does a lot of cool things. And when I say she's funny, she's very funny. And at times she's almost kind of charming in a kind of creepy way. But <laughs> she is also incredibly flawed. Oh yeah. She is very, very flawed, which is what you're gonna say in a minute about a certain sequence. But that is... I'm not going to say that's what's appealing about her. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is what's so kind of integral and bold about her character. The fact that she is... Uh, underneath, she is just this mentally disturbed individual. And she's played... Ellen Page gives her so many layers. She notices that. She doesn't just play her for laughs. She plays her as someone that is very disturbed underneath. Say what you're going to say. All right, well, I'm going to preface what I say firstly with, I understand that obviously you can like disturbed characters, and I do, before you all throw like Ramsey <laughs> Snow and Patrick Bateman and all those people in my face. I'm just taking issue with the part where you called her charming and appealing after mentioning... A, a very alluding, specific point. After alluding a very to specific the part, point. Okay. Not always. The whole point of the charming thing comes from the point that there is this surface image. All right? Okay. Underneath she is disturbed, but she's always trying to push forward this surface image, which at times is charming and is always very, very funny. But it ultimately do comes you, down to the fact that she's disturbed. Okay, I'm going to but what do you think of the sequence? The, Harrison the sequence, is alluding to a sequence in the film wherein Ellen Page's character rapes a man. Because I think that bit's supposed to be funny. And I don't I think, don't it's, think it's supposed to be but funny. But if you don't think it's supposed to be funny, I don't that's think where the it's supposed is, to be then. funny. Because yeah. I know where it comes from. Okay. And James Gunn said it comes from a very personal place. So I don't think... What I think James Gunn does with a lot of his films and why I admire him and why I think he's one of my favourite filmmakers is because he takes these very, very dark personal experiences, things that aren't supposed to be funny, and shines a dark humour on them. But do you think there's a dark humour on that bit there? In a way, possibly, yeah. You see, I don't know how comfortable. I I, I, I don't. I rape. personally don't find it funny, mm. but I think some people might. 
It is very, very dark. It pushes Shima to its darkest limit, really. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's, it is that kind of looking at these traditionally very tragic things in a very different warped way. I agree with you. Yeah. I just, I was and just that tone, questioning. I was that just tone is very reflexive of the whole kind of mentality of the film. Right, my number one is so close to your number one. Really? Oh, well, yeah. yeah. If you think yeah. about it, we've got very similar mine characters is kind of very the, similar films. Mine is kind of like an older, budgety, kind of more grounded version of this. Yeah, because my number one is Hit Girl from Kick-Ass. So we've basically gone for very similar characters mm. from very similar films. But I think if I was to just kind of condense and distill all of my babbling fanboyism about Hit Girl into one thing, I think the thing I like most about her is that she is a female action hero, but she doesn't at all feel like a token one. Feel like, like you feel like actually everyone involved was like she's the best character. Let's use her more rather than here's a female character we'll have in, so that we have a strong female character. I felt like that about Bolshe as well. They never kind of reference the fact that she's necessarily a woman. And they do it. reference obviously Hit Girl's a little girl, and it's very much played yeah. up that she's like because she, uh, like she. Does all the little girl stuff with her it's dad. Part of the character, though, isn't it? But yeah. my point is, is that it doesn't feel like she's just there as a token strong female character. Mm. She's there because actually she's the best one, and they actually want to give her. And she does most of the action. She mm. does pretty much all of the coolest stuff. She has most of the best lines. She is. She has all of the best lines. Yeah, though. it's not like they view, they put her there to say they have her there. They put her there because actually she's the best part. Mm. And I think that it's she's probably my favorite film character of all time. She's my favourite film character. And I just think that whenever she's on screen, like, I just have a massive smile on my face because she's funny, she's cool, and she's involved in some of the best action sequences ever. Like, the strobe light sequence is just... That's one of my favourites. Whoa. Ever. Yeah, definitely. And I just think that she's incredible. And I have... no. I will accept no flaws. No argument against her. I think she is one of the few characters that could very easily have a spin-off film that's just as good as well. Yeah, like, I understand people want these standalone super super f f female superhero films, mm -hmm. but the problem is I just don't think any of them are good enough. Uh, it's, it's mean, I know, but I just don't think there are many that can stand up and hold up. Like Elektra, look how that happened. Oh, yeah. Just a lot of them just aren't, not because female characters can't be strong, but just because they've not been executed very well. I don't think mm -hmm. many of them are strong enough to hold up a film, but I think it girl can. So anyway, that was real opinions. Hopefully we didn't offend anybody. Hopefully we didn't offend anyone. Hopefully James didn't James, offend anyone. James was actually quite restrained. I know, it was I'm very I'm proud good. of you. I tried. Uh, anyway, that has been real opinions. <laughs> top three each. Uh, female characters? Characters, yeah. a bit. Yeah. Um, thank you all for watching, as always. Look out for more in the future. Bye. Bye.